Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your process, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. Today is March 19th of 2019, and this episode number 21 is titled How to Find and Work with Clients Remotely with the one and the only the vendor. My name is Kyle Van Dusen. I'm from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going, Matt? It is going all right. It's, uh, boy, I've got a head cold like you wouldn't believe, so I'm a bit stuffed up. But otherwise, I am in a good mood. Well, you look great, so oh, we can't gee. tell. Thanks. Awesome. Well, before we get started and uh, get to talking to the vendor, I do want to go over a couple things that we have here off the top. Uh, number one is next week, episode 22, we have Neville from the copywriting course coming on the show. He's actually got a free deal on AppSumo right now, which is kind of like a teaser course for his, his big paid course. Uh, but I did it this weekend. It's awesome. I learned a ton from it right away, so I definitely would go check that out. He's he's a super fun and uh, interesting guy, so I'm excited about having him on the show next week. Should be a ton of fun. Um, we did a little bit of rearranging on the Admin Bar website, so if you go to the adminbar.com, you will see our recommendations page has made it into the main navigation. So if you are wondering what kind of tools me and Matt use and recommend, they are all on there. Of course, uh, many of them are affiliate links, and we appreciate your support if you decide to buy one of those and use one of our links. We much appreciate that. Also, there's other things we, uh, we recommend on there, too, as well as... Facebook groups, podcasts, the vendors mentioned on there a couple times. So go check out all the things we're into on there. And also, we just released a little uh, totals and goals Google spreadsheet this last week, which we've been getting a, a ton of really good feedback about. Actually set up the autoresponder to ask people what they thought. And people have been writing back and telling us what they think. And it's been super neat. So if you're interested in that, you can go to theadminbar.com forward slash T-A-G, like tag, and check that out. So anyways, let's uh, say hello to today's guest, the vendor. Who you might know from let's see pro beaver smart web creators basic wp i guiding creative i could go on forever so why don't we just let devender give us his own intro hello devender how are you today i am doing good you forgot a few of them and there's another one coming up so <laughs> i was spam in the start probably will keep it for the end but i'm doing good how are you guys excellent we're excited to talk with you today i can't believe it took 21 episodes to get you on here not cool blame, of us. I blame you. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, my it's fault. fault. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, I'm excited to have you here today, especially on this topic of finding and working with clients remotely. So uh, one of the questions that we get asked about a ton and you see in almost every Facebook group is, you know, how do you guys find clients? How do you stay busy? And so, uh, you know, me and Matt were chatting a little bit before this and Matt said, you know, I'm really interested to find out what the vendor says um, because a lot of Matt's clients are local as mine are too. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Matt, and let's, uh, let's start throwing some questions at the vendor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the hardest things, of course, that everybody knows is, uh, is generating that pipeline and getting more clients, you know, all, always like have, have somebody new or a proposal out there. Um, and that's difficult enough when you're in an area where you can you can walk down the street, you can hop into a couple of stores or businesses, introduce yourself, and you know when you are doing it in person, you you have a little bit more clout to there uh, to you. When uh, when you're unable to do that, man, I I can't start fathoming what I would do, and uh, that's why like I'm I'm really excited to to learn a little bit more about how you do it, man. Yeah. So I'll ask you a question to start us off, like to get to a direct point, like my first client, I think Matt's first client were just like people we knew that asked us if we could help and we went and helped them. So mm -hmm. tell us about how you got kind of started in this and how you started, uh, you know, initially realizing you were going to be working with people from outside your location. Even my first client was someone who I knew, but that person was not in my country. It, that person was in Australia, which is like far away from India. But the thing is, I had my advantages because of my beginning. Like I started as a blogger. I used to write content on my own website. I used to make 
quite a good money from Google AdSense has. At that time, I used to design and develop, but only my own websites. I had network of websites, to be honest. And those are like hidden gems. Still, they make money, even though I've not updated them in last four or five years. Oh, wow. Like just updated the software, but I didn't update the content because my my always my focus has been to write an evergreen content. I've never been into newsy stuff because mm -hmm. that actually doesn't work, to be honest, in long term. Now, the thing is, when you're working online, the thing you're doing today, you would not do, say, two or three years down the line. That's true for everyone. And you will change. Now, every two years, three years, I've been changing. Like when I did blogging for almost three, four years and I got bored of it. It's, it's just like you can't keep on writing every day, right? So I, I did ask myself what I can do. At that time, I used to design and develop my own themes just for fun. Like we all learn that way, right? And I said, like, why not let me do this? So I started by helping my friends in my circle because all my, at that time, a whole of my circle was actually fellow bloggers, tech bloggers, not people who design and develop websites. So even though they were bloggers, but their requirement was kind of, they also need a website, right? They also need a blog to write. And they also need SEO because at that time, SEO was really big, not just white hat, the black hat was even bigger. I'm talking about like 10 years back. Mm -hmm. So sure. that was the beginning. And then I said like, okay, friends, fun, you know, but that equals free, right? So right. You got to make money somewhere, right? So I was making money from advertisement, from my content. So I didn't have the pressure to make money immediately. So I could, you know, wait and, you know, try. And the first thing I started was like, like every one of us do like Google search. Hey, how do I get clients? But <laughs> at that time, <laughs> but at that time, the ecosystem was really different. Like now we have a lot of resources. Now we have thousand dollars courses. Like we have even have ten thousand dollar programs to you know help you get clients. At least they claim to help you get clients. Mm -hmm. But at that time, they were nothing of that. So that noise was not there to be honest. Not even in Google search. So whenever you Google how to get clients, the only topic, only answer you will get. Go to freelancer, go to Odesk, go to Upwork, go to Guru. And that's how I started, to be honest. I made my account on all four sites. Now it's called Upwork. At that time, it was Odesk and Elance. They got merged and became Upwork now. And I made account on all four of these sites and, you know, started seeing like what people are posting. And at, uh, even today on those websites, mostly the people who are posting are from US, UK or Australia. And people who are working are basically Asians like Philippines, India, and other neighboring countries. Obviously, the price difference because you won't find expensive gigs there. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing people don't understand is that this is just the stepping stone for you to, you know, get to the next level. This is not where you will stay for, say, two, three years. That's what I use. Like, first gig that I did were like $20 stuff that I had to change something somewhere. Like, at that time, I was only using Genesis and... Genesis was really big at that time and I knew ins and out and I know code still but th even though I don't enjoy code but you know what enjoyment has to be separate you got to work right so I learned code by hit and try and all that stuff so the thing is even though I made few gigs here and there I made some money but the most important the most valuable thing I learned was how to approach a person wanting you to, you know, offer something, some money for specific work. In the beginning, you are blank. Like someone says, like, build me a page. You do not know what is the pricing. Now it's the scenario is different. Like people will say, oh, you got to charge this, this, this. But at that time, that time, we didn't have anything. So everyone was approaching to these things as a blank person. So if you came to me at that time and said, like, OK, make this change, I'll, I'll just pay you $20. I had no option, but I'll say yes. Why? Because you were a test playground for me to learn things. And that's what I learned at that time. And I did a lot of work on, I did most of my work on ODESC because it attracted more high quality, you know, clients and more, you know, budgets as compared to freelancer. Freelancer was really cheap and it's still cheap as of now. And, but the interesting part was like, when I started doing work, I started making connections like for, I I still remember I after like first year on Upwork 
I worked with an agency for almost four years and I made a contact with that agency on Upwork and I just did a $30 gig for them. And guess what? They were actually testing me with that gig. They didn't tell me, but they were actually testing me if I could do that work. And once they got satisfied, oh, this guy can do the work. And they said, let's get out of this Upwork ecosystem and we'll talk directly and get on our team and all that. I said, that's interesting. That's cool. And it's against their TOS. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, Whatever, but you know right? what? All, all everyone does that. Yeah. It's, it's not for yeah. that gig, but for the future gig. Like we will talk to you directly via email and all that stuff. At that time, we didn't have these things like Zoom and all that. Video was out of the picture. Like we were just emailing. People didn't even used to talk via audio also at that time. And they said, we, we, we did used to use uh, project management systems. Like I started with Basecamp, then went to Teamwork. It depends, you know, what agency use. So that was the interesting part. So when I came back, when I came out of the Upwork ecosystem and directly started working with agencies, you know, that money factor that got multiplied by almost 10 times because, you know, because when you are running an agency, you know, what's the value or what you can pay for getting a page built. That's one part. And when you're testing someone, you won't pay that money. You are just testing that person. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's how I made connections. Like I have worked with quite a good number of agencies. I never had a bad, you know, ending with anyone. They all are still my friends. It's just when you are running an agency, your agency requirements change. Some agencies just vanish. Some people just lose interest. So I'm at, at this point, I'm working with two or three of them. Like one of them is very vintage. I'm calling vintage because it's of those times. Even that person is not running that agency actively, but I'm still managing his websites because he's not running that agency, but he's still making money from, you know, mm -hmm. revenue, recurrals and all that stuff. So, you know, the most important thing is connections and people don't invest time in connections because their focus is getting that next gig. Yeah. So but, you, you brought up a ton of points and I have a, uh, lots of follow-up questions for you here, but the first, the first, uh, thing I, uh, that really stuck out to me in this is the way you found your first client. And then that client grew into the next and that grew into the next is exactly the same way it happens when you do it in person. You know, you, you take that first job. My first job was a volunteer thing for a nonprofit. And then they recommended me to a friend and it snowballed from there. And, you know, that's how I grew my business. And it was the same thing for you on, you know, but doing it online and using some of those platforms where, you know, your foot in the door offer is doing that $20 gig, uh, yeah. not because you're going to make money doing that or because that's what you want to do and you don't want to hustle that all the time, but that's your foot in the door and you never know where those connections might lead. Yeah, it's so true. That's my, um, <clears throat> my old roommate, actually, Dave, he, um, I was living with him when I, would j I, I had quit my job and I went full time into, uh, into what I do now. And, you know, I was getting like, you know, the first few jobs that you get, they're not they're not going to pay out very, very well. I mean, you're untested. You don't have the, the social, like, you know, like clout Oof. there. Um, one of the things that he always said was that you have to pay your dues somehow. I didn't go to school for this. You know, I was still learning and I was, he was basically saying, dude, you're lucky, like in that they're paying you $45 to do a, uh, like a layout, but it's allowing you to learn like one way or another rather like rather than spending money you're just taking a hit on that uh that invoice you know it's it's the same thing you either go to college or you teach yourself one way or another you're paying your dues and you know in the beginning that's that's what you got to do for sure yeah and i i mean i i know that some of those relationships that you build on on sites like upwork and stuff like that turn out that way because i've I've done that. I needed I needed a quick job done and I hired somebody off of there that was going to write, you know, 30 meta descriptions and page titles for $5. And I'm like, yeah, what do I got to lose? It's $5, you know, mm -hmm. and he did a really good job. And I was like, man, this is awesome. Uh, give me your email address so we don't have to communicate on here anymore. And uh, <clears throat> he's been helping me uh, with a lot of content ever since. And it's just because of, of that connection. So one thing, you know, you brought up kind of you're in India and your clients are, you know, in places like Australia or the U.S. One thing I've had uh, several comments on here was talking about people in developing countries where, you know, uh, the, the local jobs wouldn't pay them enough. 
so they have to look at places with, you know, with uh, bigger economies to kind of support them. But there's a flip side of that too, isn't it? So if, if you do work in a country that is wealthier than the one you're in, uh, you're getting paid by by more more or less the more wealthy country standards, which can actually make you uh, quite a bit more money than maybe somebody sitting next to you. So have you seen anything like that? Yeah, that this statement would be true like 10 years, maybe eight years. Now things are like real expensive here as well, but yeah. certainly not to a level of US because obviously the currency exchange is like big. The difference is big. But you know the funny part, like, when I completed my education, like I did BCA, bachelor's in computer application. And I don't know why after that I did MBA in finance, which does not relate anywhere. Like here, like <laughs> when you complete your education, you were supposed to work, right? Work. And I, you, I was doing blogging at that time when I was actually studying those five years, I was doing blogging and I was making really good money out of those, that blogging, but still everyone expects that you got to find a real job. Guess what? Blogging is not a real job, at least not not in those times. You know, people didn't know what. And I never said anyone that, hey, I blog. I just said, I just build website because you know what? I cannot explain someone what is blogging, but I can still explain, oh, I make something that you access on the web. That's, that's how. So I did do a job in Dell for almost two years where I was in the chat support and all the people who used to, you know, chat with me were from US who used Dell. At that time, things were really different. Even the, uh, the most calls we had were for PDAs, right? Uh, people nowadays won't even know what they were like. And most were like, hey, my internet is not working. That, that was the most classic thing. My computer is broken. Like first was you're really broken. You put a hammer on your computer, but then you <laughs> learn something. It's not broken in that sense, right? The internet is not working, so that's broken. So yeah, the currency exchange helps, but not in now times because now here you find a lot of big ID companies who are serving here, people here also. And I never ventured here to find clients because my, you know, once you follow a river, you want to stay in that river, to be honest. And here, if I get a hold of clients, I would be expected to meet them in person and I really don't think I have time to invest in meeting someone in person now. It's, it's a time in- kill. Exactly. And it's it's not just, yeah, it's time kill because you discuss something that's actually not relevant to your project. But when you're emailing, you know, you've got to use your exercise, your fingers to write words. So you just write those words that you need to write, right? So there's that. Hmm. And so another thing that you kind of talked about here, and I think this is important for a lot of people looking for work to realize, and it's something I realized in my own business and something Lee Jackson's talked a bunch about, and that's kind of like diversifying some revenue streams. So yep. for, for me, you know, uh, the goals I set for my business uh, were not going to be obtainable if it, if it completely relied on me finding new clients to do complete website projects for all the time. Like... I'd really have to hustle. I'd really have to get lucky and be in the right place at the right time uh, because sometimes that's what it comes down to. Sometimes you have good months and sometimes you have bad months um, and you, you can't force somebody to buy a website, but kind of diversifying that for me, part of that was care plans. Um, part of that was consulting, but you know, you talked about making money off of your, your tech blog and Google ads like that. Of course you, you know, as we mentioned at the top of the show, you have quite a few things going on. So, uh, Kind of tell us how that played into your strategy. We all feel burned out at some point of the time. Even I felt burned out building websites for people, you know. Mm-hmm. There, there's constant pressure on your head. Like, oh, I have to complete this, 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 this. And the list is endless. And there came a time, <clears throat> like when I was blogging, my 99% of income was dependent on Google. I made, made a shift because I don't want to depend on Google. Why? How was I dependent on Google? Because my ranking was based on Google search. My money came from Google AdSense as. So if my ranking goes down, my money goes down. I have nothing in my control except for the content I produce. But you know how ranking works. You know, SEO, once you're down, you're down. So I made a constant effort that I do not want to depend on anyone else for my money. I want my assets to produce money. And when i made a shift like when i started working with people on upwork and all that i also started getting you know direct client leads and started working with but later i realized that i actually do not enjoy talking to 
you know direct clients that was something that was pulling me down mentally because that wasn't something i enjoyed so that is that is when i shut my door on i had like few rec- uh, recurring you know care plan clients at that time but i stopped it because it was getting on too much for me like even 50 bucks from a client but you had a constant you know tension on your head like if site goes down you got to do that and at that time we didn't have tools like manage wp main wp and even the migrations were done like manually it was like so difficult task to do during those days mm-hmm. and then i made a conscious effort like i love producing content that was there that has been my constant friend ever since i started blogging so my main focus for last 3 4 years besides working with people agencies on white label basis where i don't have to do client communication they just give me you got to do this i'm going to do this i get paid now it's your duty to you know check with client and all that so i'm out of it even though i don't make any recurring money out of it but i'm fine with it because i have other part of the puzzle which is my own web properties like you mentioned a lot of websites why i made those websites firstly i enjoy it secondly there's a money part into it i make money from all the websites obviously the quantum of money is different some would make less some would make more and i actually even learned about affiliate marketing like 4 or 5 years back and i failed miserably in the first year second year because i was doing affiliate marketing like most gurus were teaching but that's the wrong way to do it now if you slap an affiliate link like an affiliate link you will never make a conversion and I've said this to many of my friends and I don't have problem you know sharing stats and all that stuff publicly because it's there in 2018 I made my maximum money from affiliates and even I was surprised when I did the total and all that like so I actually went went to the drawing board what did different I do in 2018 that made me money well I did two things first I focused on building quality email list not email list but quality email list because there's a difference i even experimented with you know two lists like i'll just give you an example of pro beaver now i have a free ebook there like so if you download you get on my list right so i'm sort of bribing people to get on my list so that list is almost like 3000 to 4000 people that's a separate list and there's a separate list where where i have a you know sign up box on my site and people can voluntarily sign up like i'm not bribing you i'm not slapping you know pop up on your face okay come it's there and those that list has almost like 750 or 800 people there but that 800 people produce more money gives you more engagement than that 3000 people that is where most people do the wrong thing like they are focused on building lead magnets obviously it works for some type of business but if you're really interested in building your tribe and building a tribe of people who are actually interested in the stuff you create build in a most natural way like those 3000 people who came to my email list didn't come because i was producing something on pro beaver they came for that specific guide and after that they forgot to unsubscribe right sure <laughs> so yeah. so that's that's how and i love producing content and i I've, i've learned one thing i actually I've actually shared this with so many of my friends like I have a site called basicwp.com which is like basic wordpress how you want to pronounce it now I also have probeaver.com now if I had put the content of probeaver.com on basicwp.com would that had generated same amount of buzz relationship connections no, no. why because branding and how you communicate is very important that's why where the concept of niche website come obviously there's a school of thought like i'll just make a website on my name and pull dump all kind of content but you will not have a targeted audience on that website and even google will be confused where to put your website right mm-hmm. now you want to put elementor stuff on it you want to put beaver stuff on it you want to put even squarespace stuff on it even google won't know what the site is all about so if you want to build something specific and i only build things on services and tools that i use like i have a course on beaver builder someone actually said why don't you build a similar course on elementor it's not i hate elementor i actually use elementor it's but i don't use it actively enough that i can build a course that would be like cheating myself and cheating people who are going to buy that course so if you are using something share that knowledge it can be free like you are sharing your knowledge free now you may not see the returns today 
but you will definitely see down the line like when i launched pro beaver i didn't make any money for the first 6 months because i started it for the heck of it to be honest i i i just wanted to share what i learned and after that someone said hey why don't you like when these uh, you know add-ons came out power pack ultimate beaver they said well, why don't you use affiliate links because you are actually linking so you can use and then the magic started you know yeah and that's true about like building an authentic audience that makes a whole lot of difference and i I've, I've seen that in some lists i've built where it's just you know nobody ever opens the emails because you know they signed up for the wrong reasons you know they're not that interested and one more point if you're getting replies to your email newsletters you're doing something right i, I fortunately i do get them <laughs> here and there not every day but i don't even send emails every day i just send one email per week at max two but that's about it and there's a way to you know share an affiliate link like if there's a new offer you don't need to send a special email with that offer your regular content communication email can have that link at the bottom and people notice it and people click it and if they're interested they do buy it and i've been tracking my i've never promoted appsumo stuff to be honest in 2018 i made all money from other affiliates which convert really well the thing is you make more money from them because you get more money per conversion whereas affiliate uh, appsumo deals you get, don't get much money because they are hardly like 50 bucks and you get like 12% or something yeah, you get about $3 most of the time Yeah but that's nothing compared to $100 per sale so sure. so that's that's different but I I'm actually I've started using AppSumo you know I've had links and I've been experimenting how it works and I made like I'm going to tell you hard numbers here like I I made just $50 in February right and like we are at March 19th today so I made over $100 in March from AppSumo deals now I didn't do anything different. I just refined something that I did in February. Now, if you want to sh- if you want to hear, I can tell you what the refinement was. But I guess your audience would be interested in that. Yeah, yeah let's do it. it. So, it's basically I just took out the visitor color blindness. Now, how I promote my apps and modules. I use convert box bar on my websites. I don't stuff links in my content. Like that's no no for seasonal links. You should never do that. So I have AppSumo bar like hello bar uh convert box bar on all my sites. So what I used to do, I used to update the you know text and link of the new deal there. But I was noticing like I myself is getting bored of seeing that bar. Won't my regular visitors would get bored of seeing that bar. So what I did So whenever I used to change the affiliate link after 2 3 days I used to change the color of the bar like background color like from blue to yellow yellow to orange like all sharp color blinded colors like they will catch your attention like a dog barking so so and it worked you know clicks went up and if your clicks are going up you will have conversions going up somewhere or they you know here and there so color blindness and or in general terms called visitor blindness is very common thing you know people say oh i've slapped a pop up thing here or i have put a email sign up box after the content guess what all sites have a content sign up box after the content right right what yeah, what different are you doing i don't i don't put those boxes on my sites because those are sort of useless to be honest <laughs> at least in my vocabulary but then everyone has its own way of doing i I don't like reading stuff and then doing it. I love to do an experiment and then do the comparison like how it's working for me. And I have like good circle of friends so I can tell them, "Hey, I did this. Can you do this and tell me how was your experience?" And obviously if it's working for you and for your friend, then you are validating yourself like you're doing something right here. Yeah. No doubt. No, that's that's good advice and I do want to go over at the end uh you send out one of my favorite emails every week and I want to make sure everybody gets signed up on it. And th- the reason you probably do well from affiliate stuff is because you produce really good content that's really useful to people, you know? So, uh you know, that's the biggest difference if you're going to throw out trash out there, it's not going to work very well. So we kind of covered, you know, how you got started um finding clients remotely and and kind of how that e- evolved. So <clears throat> When it comes to, you know, where you're at today, you've been building websites for quite a while. Most of those relationships that you built in the beginning have kind of snowballed or, or you know morphed into new ones now. So do you still find yourself uh hunting out jobs as far as web development projects at this point 
or just uh, at, because you've grown that organically kind of over time? Is it just what comes to you? Nope. I've said no more in 2018 and 2019 than yes. And I've been happy. Problem is, Lord, I never said no in the beginning years. And this is true for everyone because we are fearful of saying no to people, which oh, yeah. is actually bad. The earlier that you learn to say no, the better it is for you because there, there are times like you are, now I'll give you an example. Like you're building a website, regular five page website, and take, it takes you X amount of hours. That's done. Now there's another task that a person sends you. You don't know that person. You don't know what that site is built on. And it says, okay, can you change one page here and there? But guess what? That one change will take you more hours than building that new site. Why? Because you don't know what that website was built. And we all so-called geeks, have our own weird ways of making websites. I've seen the most horrible websites, but then they are the most authoritative people on the internet. So obviously no names, but <laughs> so you you just can't, you know, because there are people who will wear masks and say, oh, I'm the best. I never said I'm the best. I actually don't even put I'm a developer, even though I know code the majority of people. I know design with like majority of people. I still, but not a comfortable putting the, you know, tag of I'm a developer. I still end up saying I'm an implementer. I'll build you what you want. That's about it. And obviously there are times, and don't be hesitant in reaching out to people who are better than you. Like sometime a project would require a heavy, you know, PHP coding and all that. I know code, but then I know my limitations and I know my interest. I would not, it's not that I cannot learn it, but thing is, I don't want to learn it. So it's rather than me spending four hours, you know, pulling my hair, I will just hire someone who I know is better and he will do it in five minutes. Isn't that a better option? Yeah. So that's how I do it. And now c- coming to your question of hunting, no, I don't hunt. I just hunt for people who are going to consume my content. That's about it. So with the uh, the landscape of like freelancer and you know Odesk, which doesn't exist anymore, uh, what is that now? It's um, Upwork. Upwork, right? So the um, these platforms are are much more crowded than they used to be. Um, <clears throat> do you feel like starting out there is still a viable thing, or like how would you recommend you know in today's time, you know people that are looking for uh, for web development jobs, how to reach out to people? Firstly, Upwork has gone a big change in the last two years. They they are very strict on getting new people who want to work. And even freelancer is following their steps. Now they've introduced some monthly thing, like you got to pay $2 every month to stay on there as a freelancer. So that has taken out a lot of people out because there will be no casual people there. So because, you know, when you got to spend money, you will only be there if you are really want to be there, right? First thing is, if you're still new, the best part is, yes, go for freelancer, go for Upwork, but don't just go there. Spread your tentacles. Go to Facebook groups. You know, people people often say, hey, Facebook is a waste of time. I'm always on Facebook, but then it depends on where you are on Facebook. Like if, it's your, if you are on newsfeed watching cat videos, obviously that's a waste of time. But if you are in groups like the admin bar, you, you definitely learn new things. And guess what? 90% of ideas of my content creation come from questions that people ask. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense because if they're asking, there's clearly other people that have the same questions. Exactly. And you need to, and you need to follow the trend. Like people, you know, we, we are so, we spend more energy on things that are not important than things that are important. Like, so you see so much debate. Oh, you use Elementor. I switched to Beaver. I went from Beaver to Elementor. It doesn't matter which page builder you use a client. If you have a client that is dictating you that you should use Elementor, then you've got a wrong client, to be honest. It's you who have to dictate that I use this theme, this page builder, this SEO plugin. If you're happy, stick with it. I'll go somewhere else. I agree with you 100% on that. And I will say, you know, you mentioned too, like, um, you know, that building relationship part of it, networking and stuff like that. You know, I ended up working with, you know, I I came into the space not knowing anything about web. I found these Facebook groups and started following the people we all follow, like Lee Jackson and Dave Foy and all these folks um, and learning a ton from them and just being active in their groups. 
<clears throat> some people might say wasting time on Facebook. I didn't feel like I was wasting time. And, and I know now that I wasn't wasting time. I ended up doing work for some of those people, uh, you know, being hired by them to do stuff, uh, finding other people within their groups. Um, you know, Adam from WP Crafter sent me a lot of his followers to do work. Why, why would he do that? There's a million people who can design better than me. Yeah. There's 10 million people who can develop better than me. You know, why did he send that to me? Well, because I was active and trying to help people and networking online. So, you know, you can use all those things to your advantage. And it is just about building relationships with people. People don't necessarily have to have the best person to hire. They need to have somebody that they like and trust to hire, right. you know, so anybody can be somebody that's likable and trust trustworthy. Um, so those are all things you can do to definitely pick up work. Um, but it does take time. It's not an yeah. overnight thing. If you, if you are one of those, like I'll, I'll just leave my job on first January and I'll find a gigs by 15 January, then you are daydreaming. You like you did, like you also left your job, but why, while you were in the process of leaving your job, you actually made sure that I had some gigs, which get me some amount of money that can, you know, help me at least go through that initial phase. Mm -hmm. And for me, the advantage is like, I have multiple streams of revenue and they are so different that I don't need to depend on people here. And that's, and in 2019, my focus has been like cut down on the, <clears throat> you know, website design and development stuff. I'm not going to stop it because the thing is it, not just it gives me money. I actually enjoy it and I actually learn it. Now, if I'm going to make a course on Beaver Builder, how would I learn Beaver Builder? By making client websites using Beaver Builder. That's given, right? You, that, that's the starting point. Like you mentioned Facebook groups. You've learned so much things like which tool should I use? How do I onboard clients? How do I price things? You know, you talk to people like, oh, I charge this much. Oh, I'm charging less. I should up, up my char prices. So these are the things we learn by talking to people, right? So I think the only thing is like if you're starting new and you're struggling, firstly, find your sweet spot, what you are good at or what you are interested at. Just don't follow the herd. Now, there, there are a lot of people who would say, you know, you should only build website for people who come on to your care plans, etc., and all that. I'm not interested on in managing anyone's website. It's not, I cannot do it, but do I want to do it right now? You have to go from have to want very quickly. Like when I started, I have to do those things because I didn't have an option. But I went from have to want. Now I only do things that I want to do, not have to do. So <clears throat> the early you move from, you know, have to want, the better it is for, you know, your, and you know, our online work also affects our personal life as well. It's easier said than done, but it does take a toll on you. Why? Because you're working alone. Firstly, obviously you chit chat with people on Facebook groups and all that that's given, but still you get certain kind of my mental, you know, block there in your head when you're working online, because you're constantly emailing people, you're, you know, so having accountability groups, like I almost daily chat with Todd because it's, it's not that we talk work about it. We just, how, how was your day and all that? It's just you cat know, you, gifts. Yeah, that's, that's given, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing is you should do what you enjoy. I know it's easier said than done, but you can, anyone can definitely achieve it, but it takes time. You know, it can take one, one year for someone. It can take two years for someone. It can even take two months for someone. So it depends on you and you got to be a little smart here. Like you should grab up the people. The thing is people forget to give. And then they want to grab everything, want to take. That's not how web works. You need to give first and then expect something. In that's, return. that's not how the world works at all. And, you know, you use Todd as an example. I'm sure you and Todd were talking a long time and became friends. And, and however your relationship is now, long before he asked you to design his website, you know. So you didn't go into that kind of relationship saying, ah, I'm going to go start talking to this guy because I think one day he'll give me money, you know. It's an organic <laughs> relationship. And then Todd's like, I need a website. I'm going to talk to Devender because that's who I trust, you know. And probably the same thing with the beautiful site you made for Kim Doyle. So uh, developing those relationships, it, it, you can't go into it expecting to take from it, you know. 
Sometimes you just have to give and sometimes you'll get back and sometimes you won't, but you're never going to get back if you just go in there trying to give That's true. or trying to take, excuse me. So we've, we've kind of covered, uh, people that are just starting out, um, you know, trying to get their, their foothold in this world of developers and, and designers. What would you say to people that have been in the game for a little while and maybe they're experiencing, you know, a couple of down months in a row and they, they may not have, um, you know, affiliates set up or they might not have uh, an email list. What would be the, the, the piece of advice, like the first thing that you think these folks should uh, consider doing? Build your web properties. Simple. Build your web properties. Build your niche offerings that can help you spread your expertise further, not just getting new connections, but also making money via it. Like you launch that new worksheet on admin bar. I know it's just $5, but thing is, it's the beginning of the, you know, whole new engine, right? So, you know, a little bit of direction, like you start conversing with people and all that. Like when I launched Pro Beaver, I didn't have anything to sell there, right? I was just sharing knowledge how i started like i then first thing i tested the water by offering a free uh, uh Be- beaver builder template design and then someone said why don't why are you giving it for free you shouldn't give it for free instead what i did download it for free or pay what you want and i was surprised most people were paying 20 dollars for that template wow. because okay. that That's was awesome. free that was really good looking template so i only design good looking stuff so you know, of course yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but that gave me an idea you know the thing was i was just testing the water like do people pay for these kind of things and then came how you can you know expand it further and then someone suggested you know we all talk about repurposing we read about it but we never follow up because hey we don't have time right so after that came the repurposing part i made that free ebook and i said okay i got to build the email list you know like normal email list give a bribe and then build an email list. So I needed to make an ebook. So what I did, I took five posts of my Pro Beaver, just put that in an ebook. It's done. Download it. So that email list was there. Obviously that email list doesn't perform as good as the natural email list, but it still gives you something. It still gives you connections. And I was able to sell my course. And then you know the story of courses came like I I I was new at that time. I made my first course almost like two years back, maybe more than that, because it's my third year with Teachable. So when I, you know, signed up for Teachable, it was like six months before I started making those, you know, plans for it. And when I started making my first course, which was supposed to be on CSS, it never took off. I recorded 14 videos. I was rusty. I didn't know how to set up camera. I didn't know how to record. You know, I didn't know anything about it. And that course is going to launch in a big way in about two months time. That's, that's the big plan. But then I didn't give up at that time. The thing, thing was I got overwhelmed with it. Like I had 50 videos in the planning that I need to make. I made 15 of them and I lost interest. And then went back to the drawing board and said, I need to make something smaller. Like then I made the course on SEO mastery for page builders. Like that was just SEO for page builder people. And that was my first course and and that was an eye opener in a sense like when i launched my first course i already had the email list right and not just here but i also had email list on basic wp which were general wordpress people not necessarily using beaver builder but then my course was not on beaver builder itself and i was surprised you know these kind of surprises you know need that kick in you to do things like i launched my course and i sent an email just like on 8 p.m. I launched my course and 8.30 I sent the email. And by 10, I because everything was new at that time, even I didn't know how the transaction will show on Teachable and all that stuff. So I went for dinner, I came back. I made $1,500 in just two hours. And I was like, really? So this thing does work, right? So, you know, you these are the lucky surprises everyone looks for and they do happen. But you got to plan a little just a little because most people end up planning forever, forever and yep. they don't do and my, i'm not like that i i launch it and i launch it and you know what i've launched the podcast on smart web creators it doesn't even have an about page yet <laughs> and it doesn't have a contact page yet but it doesn't matter <laughs> I, I'm like you. I will launch something, you know, uh, prematurely every time. Get it out there. We can always 
twist and tweak on it. I harp on Matt a little bit when he uh, procrastinates planning a little bit. So I think I we uh, plan. That is definitely. Yeah. I'm I'm a list maker. I'm a planner, and uh, I, that is it's it's a fault. <laughs> but you, know, you had mentioned the... um, you know downtime and and how you're always too busy to to plan and this and that and you know, you know it's those down months that if you've got a little bit of a runway and you know you always should account for you know a couple of months throughout the year like you need that savings just in case but those are ideal months to to take a step away from your business and like look at it from from above and just kind of see like okay where can we go and start planning like you know, for me, December is a uh, a very slow month, and I think it is for yeah. for most people. Everyone, that's Absolutely. my planning month because everyone is busy jingle bells. So right, yeah, exactly. So that's <laughs> like that's an ideal month to plan. Know that you're you know you're you're not going to have that much uh, coming in that month, so you may as well take a step back, take some time off, but take a look at the business and see you know where you can position yourself for the next year. I think that. Uh, people look at at dry months as like a scary or terrible thing where in reality it doesn't have to be it can be a phenomenal you know learning experience and uh, a, a time to to like reflect you know and and pivot if you need to exactly and jan uh, december to 15 january is always like planning phase for me mm -hmm. like look back it's not looking back how much money i made which i'll know when i pay taxes <laughs> but that's a separate story but you know it's it's about what you did right in that year in those 11 months and what you didn't do right plus make another bucket what you enjoyed doing in that year what you did not enjoy doing that year and i'm saying don't segregate clients oh i didn't like working with him it's just like making general buckets right mm -hmm. and for me, December 2018 was like, I enjoyed making content. Like I was getting in my old groove of, you know, writing content and all that. You don't have, I don't have a perfect English to be honest, neither speaking or writing, but then English, you know, no one is perfect in real sense because everyone from different countries will have different accents and different way of writing. Like, I've been speaking English for 35 years almost, and I don't have perfect English either. So it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> And plus, I have Grammarly. Who cares? No doubt. <laughs> so the thing is, just reflect back what you've done right, what you've not done right, what you've enjoyed, what you've not enjoyed. And in the end, your end result should be diversify your income stream. Don't depend on clients. Mm -mm. That's given. Everyone has certain expertise. You just need to use that expertise and build a product, build a service. But then just don't start building a product. You need to have a platform. And that platform is niche website. Now, again, the people just like you know they will make a mashup of their primary domain like if like kyle has ogle web now if he starts putting the admin bar content on ogle web start putting elementor content over it it will become a mashup not just he will hit even google will hit and even it will leave his clients confused so and people are afraid of why would i want to build a new brand why not to be honest i have lots of sites now and i have planning for one big niche website coming in April. Yeah, we are in March. So I've already registered the domain. It's just, and I follow a pattern, you know, now I've built so many niche websites. So I know what's, what's, what's the minimum thing I need. I just need branding logo. I'm not going to go, go over, go, go, ha, ha over the design and all that, but I definitely do the branding, like basic layout, the basic colors that I'm going to use and the logo design. Once I'm done, I'm going to write at least five foundation articles that define the you know, that thing. Once I'm done with it, once I publish them, then only I'm going to reveal it to the world. Not before that. Man, you have so much uh, wisdom and great advice. I know we got it. I thought of about three or four different things that you've talked about during this uh, episode that I think we could do entire episodes on, but we are running, running up against an hour already. So I do want to spend a little bit of time. Uh, I want you to kind of go over with us uh, some of those websites you have, what you do on those. Uh, my first uh, introduction to you was I tried launching a Beaver Builder related uh, website uh, when I first started, kind of where people could showcase websites. And, uh, and this guy wrote me and he's like, you'll never believe this, but I was just about to launch the same thing on my site. And I'm like, sure, you stole my idea. You know, uh, 
So anyways, come find out that was Devender and uh, I, don't, I don't run that website anymore. So uh, he beat me out on that one. But why don't you tell everybody different places they can find you, things they built. I'm sure this has been inspiring for people. So tell them where they can go find all these cool things you've made. And I do want to interject when you get to one of them for sure. Yeah, but before that, I want to reply to that, you know, the, your beaver bunch or munch, I forget the name. But the thing is, beaver bunch is a whole different side of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I launched Pro Beaver, like after five months down the line, there were five different sites on Beaver Builder. There were five. Yours was one included. And I'm not saying out of that ego or proudy feeling, but they all vanished over the period of next one year or so. Why? Because there was one missing piece, consistency. Sure. You know, I can launch 10 different sites, but if I cannot be consistent in maintaining the content on it, then I'm failure at all 10. So when you're launching a niche site, you need to make sure that you have certain plan to produce content, at least on regular. I'm not saying there are people who say write two articles per week. No, my mileage is to write one article per week, but I will guarantee that there will be one article per week. So that's how... You know, you need to define and coming to the sites. My latest is obviously smart web creators, which is the podcast website, which again, you know, here also, I decided that it will have five verticals. When I say verticals means content verticals, the type of content it will have. Obviously, the first one was podcast and the second one was created the newsletter, which I planned, but I didn't start in the beginning. Why? Because every content takes time. If I start from a newsletter, I don't have an audience on that side who will read that newsletter. So that came after two months. And then I had a toolbox thing that came after four months. I have two more content verticals there, which will definitely come, but they will all come in a plan phase when I have a mileage to, you know, produce stuff. I do want to tell everybody the, the created newsletter that you put out is one of the best emails I get every week because it has always got all these cool things I didn't know existed. It's like if you took out took out every post on Facebook about something cool in the world of web and then just boiled it down to one small compact email with all those tools. It's great. So if you're not on that, definitely go sign up for that. Yeah. I only write that email when I have something to share. Like I don't write it every week. I generally end up writing one in two weeks, but I only write it when I have something good to share. And so there's great, there's smart web creators, there's pro viewer, this basic WP, which is going to have a big revamp in May, not April, because April is reserved for something new and exciting, which I'm really excited about. And there's a, I also have Simple Pro themes, which is basically commercial Genesis themes. And I made a lot of money from those two themes. That's in partnership with my friend, Chinrai. And we most probably are relaunching it because building themes with blocks is so very fun now take out the beavers and elementals out of it <laughs> even though i still use beaver builder but you know it's fun it's easy like if you're going to make like five page brochure website you can do the magic with blocks seriously you can it's and just, it's I'm, new too so that's reinvigorating when you get to do something new again and it's standardized like you install the wordpress you have blocks you don't need to buy something extra extra bells and whistles to put there and we've been playing with it me and my partner have been playing with it and we first want to recreate our existing two themes with you know blocks and see how it goes and so far it's easy it's not nothing too fancy and i still love genesis even though i don't use it on my personal websites now but i still love it and it's one of the best theme framework it's just uh, you know Things like Beaver Builder, Elementor, these things have made us lazy. Well, not lazy, but then, you know. Uh, Efficient. Yeah, smart. <laughs> smart. No <laughs> doubt. So, well, I definitely think uh, everybody needs to go check those things out. I'm sure if you don't know Devender, he, uh, he likes to hang out on Facebook. I'm sure if you send him a message, he'll chat with you. Uh, we definitely got to have you back on and go over some more of these topics because, uh, you know, I kind of feel like building an entire new website for myself right now when we get off this call. So I'm sure I'm not the only one. So, uh, Matt, do you have anything to add to the conversation before we get ready to sign off here? No, other than agreeing that uh, we could definitely drill down into quite a few of these topics. So I think uh, we're going to have a repeat guest on our hands here. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, be, I'm always free, you know. 
I never Bender seen hates him. coming on shows, so I'm sure we'll have to really <laughs> twist his arm to get him on here again. No, no, no. The thing is, one thing I never say to anyone that I'm busy, you know, that thing doesn't exist in my dictionary. I never say busy, you know. No one is busy. It's all about rejuggling your priorities, which thing you want first. Uh, busy is an easy word. Busy, thank you, sorry. These are so convenient words we use often, but they, if you are doing things right, you do actually don't need to use these words. There's another episode right there. Yeah. I'm just going to have him uh, talk for about 15 minutes and we'll have all our content planned for the year. <laughs> well, Devinder, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely schedule something with you again soon. So I want to tell everybody as a reminder, if this group uh, helps you in any way, the easiest way for you to help us is to share content, subscribe to the podcast or YouTube channel, use our affiliate links, which would be great. All of this is free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. And I guess that is all for now. And we will catch you all on the inside. I'll just bumble into the microphone for a couple seconds while Matt looks at me and says, you know, we're live, right? <laughs>